a week ago or for you now watching this video two weeks ago I received these brand new dark den acrylic enclosures for the US market so today we are going to set them up and I chose three very special animals that we are going to rehouse inside And next video is going to be about the junglearium. I have seen a lot of comments asking when next update is coming. So next video will be all about that. And the main focus will be, you see that I have some new plants inside, you see? Bunch of bromeliads. As already said before, we are going to put them on this wall and that way the whole enclosure will look better. And yeah, it is currently foggy, I need to clean it. But the reason why I didn't do this video earlier is because I had to get this stuff. This is called... I have no idea but it is a type of surface on which plants can easily grow and spread around so I will cover this wall with it and then I will stick all of these bromeliads on it and also some new climbing plants that are already in the junglearium you see frogs are already coming from all the sides expecting food to come yeah a little bit later <laughs> I need to record the video first you know it is crazy how friendly some of the frogs are. Not all. In both species I have couple that are extremely bold and couple that are super skittish. So it is interesting how their behavior depends more on the individual frog and not on the species they are. So that means that even though my Dendrobates auratus is not hiding like at all, it doesn't mean that if you get also the same species, it doesn't mean that yours will also be always outside. It all depends on the individual frog. Anyhow, now let me showcase the enclosures. They are basically the same design as my European version, but their overall build quality and appearance is far superior than the European version. You have the fossorial with the top opening, you see. Then this cube is a terrestrial one, also with top opening. And the last one is an arboreal with front opening. The fossorial and arboreal are the same dimensions, you can see, while the cube is a little bit shorter. And they are ideal for all sorts of tarantula slings. These front opening ones are also nice for jumping spiders. And also you will see by the animal that we are going to rehouse in this one, you can also put some special arachnids that I will show you a bit later. Uh, let's first set up the enclosures. Oh yes, and I must not forget, they are fully stackable and compatible with each other. So you can stack them like this. You see, they all got legs that go in designated areas, designated holes and also in the back. So it cannot slide left, right or front. Yeah, they are like super steady. You see, they cannot slide from each other. And I have no idea why all enclosures aren't like this. This one is Tarantula Cat's acrylic enclosure. And that one doesn't have anything. So if you put it on top of the enclosure, it will slide around, you see. I would give stackable legs to all of them. And by the way, they are made by Torrential Creeps. They are a US-based company and they are only available on US and Canada market. So if you want to treat your creepy crawler with a premium enclosure, there will be a link in the description. Let's finally set them up. First for soil enclosure, because that's the easiest. All you need is a bunch of substrate. You fill that enclosure all the way to the top, yeah. Now it seems like the enclosure is full of substrate, but if you compress it, you will realize that it is not that full. So always make sure to compress your substrate a bit. Not too much, you don't want to make it super compressed, but you definitely want to compress it a bit. Make your tarantula work for that burrow. Don't forget a pre-made burrow, so tarantula got a place to start. And before you say bam, your enclosure is ready for the tarantula. I prepared a special one for this, one that you didn't see in quite a while. Honestly, I have no idea when was the last time I even featured this one. You see? This is a Sahidra Raneoseraya. And it is a dwarf tarantula, an Asian dwarf tarantula that would be perfect for this enclosure. I'm not sure how big they get, but I think they don't get much bigger. Three to four inches, that is like, hmm, sounds too big. Let me just check. Here it says about 10 centimeters, so ugh, maybe it won't be big enough for an adult after all. But we can always do another rehouse, it's not a problem. But for now it should be ideal. Now you know Asian tarantulas, kind of fast and bolty, so we must be prepared for everything. What I'm hoping is that ah, I can as always guide it directly in the new enclosure. Yes, yeah, something like that. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, it is not that fast, that's fine. Maybe it is in a pre-mold. Okay, okay, okay. Use this opportunity. 
Let's use this opportunity I wanted to say to record it, but yeah, that is gone. It is already in the pre-made barrel. Okay, you could kind of see it. Hopefully it was enough. <laughs> when it comes to acrylic, what I dislike is how the dirt will stick to it. Like, you know, because of the static electricity, like on the balloon, you will get all sorts of dirt particles hang on it. Same thing happens with acrylic enclosures. So you need to try and blow it off, which usually just gets more dirt particles in the air. If you ask me, glass is always superior to acrylic. But when it comes to enclosures of this size, you don't have really an alternative. You cannot really make a glass enclosure of this size, at least not the one that is cost effective and practical. So this is by far the best alternative. Now, second enclosure, next enclosure, will be a terrestrial tarantula and for that process is kind of the same I think this will be enough yeah definitely and the tiny cork bark that will be used as a hide of course don't forget to compress the substrate so you end up with this you can add a leaf litter and more details but for enclosures of this size I don't really practice it it really needs to be some special animal inside some special critter for me to go an extra mile and provide a more visually appealing enclosure the tarantula don't really care and the tarantula is this one one with really funny name that is Boomba Kabokla. I think that whenever I talk about this tarantula, I always mention how weird and funny her name is. But that is exactly how I feel about it. I expect this to go much smoother than with the previous tarantula. Even though we get some weird movement. And that was a little bit of spinneret action. Look at those spinnerets. You can see them nice and well and now she needs to move. <laughs> Yeah, waving a little bit. Girl, enjoy your brand new enclosure. I know that it is not super spacious, it is bigger than your old one, but I think that you will need to get a new one in two or maybe even only one mold. I don't know, it is kind of hard to say, it depends on how, how much she will grow with one mold. Let's set up the final enclosure, an arboreal one, and that one will not be for a tarantula. But by now I assume that you probably figured it out. This enclosure of course does not need a lot of substrate. So only a bit. Mostly so you can easily maintain a humidity inside. And so it can hold a cork bark in place. Yeah. These are the two main reasons. Ah, now I can finally show you which animal I will put inside. Look at this. This is a small tailless whip scorpion. Look at it. Oh yeah, it was much, much, much tinier when I got it. Here it is. <laughs> it pedipops are like red, right? But if it keeps growing, it will get much, much bigger. And if you never witness a Taylor Swift scorpion, they are awesome, basically harmless. They don't have a venom or real fangs or something that they can bite you. Although, here you can maybe spot a tiny mouth, I don't know behind these terribly looking pedipops. They use these pedipops to grab their prey. You should see it in action and actually, after we rehouse it, I will let it settle in the enclosure. We are going to do a time jump and then we will feed it and I will try to record it in slow motion maybe. Yeah, I will try that. So let's get it in quick. I will just place a cork bark like this and just push it onto the new cork bark or on the substrate, whatever. Whatever you prefer, you just get yourself comfortable. And by the way, you see these long antennae. These are actually a pair of front legs that evolve like this. Fun fact, if you look at them, they are arachnids, but you can only see three pairs of legs. And if you know anything about biology, bugs got six legs while arachnids got eight legs. And the trick here is those antennae or feelers are actually fourth pair of legs. So in total, they have eight legs, even though it doesn't appear like that. She's now trying to map her new enclosure, you see? She's poking and prodding so she can decide where she wants to move. <laughs> you see how it works? It is really long and she can stretch it far, far, far away, even though she's not doing it now. Ah, there it goes. I'm not sure if it's in focus or not. It is tiny, so I don't really see it very well. Anyhow, let's now do a time jump and it is next day. Uh, Whip Scorpion is hopefully settled. 
I set up everything for the slow motion recording, which means that there is a lot of light now here because super slow motion requires that. So there is a chance that it will still refuse the food because of all the light and everything. If that happens, we are going to do another time jump and we will try to record it in normal motion and leave the super slow motion for some other time. Okay, the camera is rolling and I'm dropping the roach. Now we just wait for it to come to the whip scorpion. <laughs> what? It is like the whip scorpion wasn't ready for that. <laughs> and where did the roach go? <gasps> oh, look at this. It is no longer in super slow motion, but look where the roach is. It is literally on the whip scorpion. How do you tolerate that, my man? Get that roach, come on. Is the roach still there? Yeah, I think it, uh, oh, there. it is down now. <laughs> ah, unfortunately, the feeding won't happen. So let's do another time jump. Light is off. The whip scorpion seems a bit more active. So hopefully this will be it. We just want a simple takedown. Nothing special. As soon as this roach comes to the right spot, of course that he went the other way. Okay, he is coming back. Yes, 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 right there. No, come on, dude. Where are those? Oh. The feelers are poking the road, you see? Could it be that she's not hungry? Possibly. I think that she would turn by now if she was hungry and if she felt the roach. And I'm most definitely sure that she figured out that there is something moving underneath her. You see how her feelers are poking and prodding around. Hmm? What, what, what? Is she now searching for the roach or did she just randomly turn? See how she is reaching with the feelers around. Grab it, please. Nope, she would definitely grab it by now. Sorry guys, I really wanted this to happen, but better luck next time. Yep, yep, yep. Anyhow, let's see the, all the enclosures together. One more time before I end this video. Looking good, look at this stack. <laughs> this is what I call a premium enclosure. So if you want to have them for yourself, they are available on Tarantula Cribs web shop. You can buy them individually or as a whole set. There will be a link in the description and probably in the top comments. So go, go, go. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, thumbs it up and comment something. If you want to support this channel more, there's a Patreon page and web shop page where you can buy this European version, but only available in Europe. Uh, Apple every Monday. So, see you again soon, soon, soon. Bye. -bye.